Chris Coons, a uh, member of the Judiciary Committee, a key player in everything that went down uh, on Friday uh, that led to the current invest FBI investigation. Um, what feedback have you gotten from your colleagues, both Jeff Flake and Republicans and Democrats, about what happened? Uh, well, first, you know, Jeff Flake is the real hero here of what happened. Um, he just needed some reassurance to listen to his own conscience and to recognize that the very real doubts he had at the end of Dr. Ford's testimony, and which a number of other colleagues had, were worth taking a pause and investigating. Uh, Jeff's first comment to me when we went uh, sort of backstage in the anteroom to talk was, this is tearing our country apart. Uh, he'd been deeply moved, I'd been deeply moved by the number of folks who had spoken to us, talked to us, texted us, emailed us during Dr. Ford's testimony. I heard from people who I'd known my whole life and I heard from people I'd never met with their stories of sexual assault. Uh, and I deeply respect Jeff uh, for standing up to a ton of pressure uh, to demand a one-week pause and an expanded FBI background check. Now the challenge is going to be making that real. Right, so the big question now is, what is your understanding of who defines and set this, the terms of the scope of what the FBI investigates? Well, the FBI works at the direction of the White House in investigating the background of an administration nominee like Judge Kavanaugh. So um, it's the White House counsel or the president who says this is the scope of the further investigation. Because they're doing it at the request of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and what Senator Flake said was limited in scope and duration, um, I expect, I support it being one week. That's what a compromise is all about. I would have liked longer, right. but Please one week up. I think was a key uh, compromise and commitment here. The core issue is, are they going to fully investigate the allegations in front of us? So will they just question two or three witnesses who we already know all about, like Mark Judge, um, Judge Kavanaugh, Dr. Ford, or will they question some of the dozen people who've come forward publicly in the press and said what Judge Kavanaugh said wasn't true, I saw him doing this or doing that, drinking uh, with me at Yale or uh, at a certain type of party in high school. Will that be investigated? That's the issue. Were it the case that the White House were to say, uh, deliver a list of witnesses to the FBI mm -hmm. and say, this is the list, only these people and, and, and no one else, what would be your reaction to that? I'd be concerned that that was an attempt to really uh, sharply narrow. Um, you know, look, if it's a list of 75 witnesses, I'd sure. say, okay, you know, in a week, that's a lot. But right. if it's a list of three, right. that's an attempt to, to shut it down and not make what this is legitimate the, background What's the back and forth now? I mean, I know that these processes are dynamic. Obviously, the FBI is in the, uh, in the, executive, in the executive branch. But they also, you know, this is something that happens all the time. There's yep. tons of nominees. There's tons of background checks. They're used to going to senators on relevant committees yep. and having a back and forth about what the senators want to see investigated. That's right. And I do think it's appropriate um, for us to offer some input on what we think should or shouldn't be in the scope of this investigation, and they'll take it as they do take advice or input from senators with typical investigations on Judiciary Committee. Look, time is of the essence. They ought to be doing multiple investigations at the same time. There's multiple allegations currently in front of the committee. Um, and I think it's not hard to figure out the universe of witnesses. It's not 500. It may not even be 50. But it's got to be more than five. But it's not five. It's more than five. It's more than five. There are three women who have made on-the-record allegations. Right in addition to Dr. Christine and, and I hope that all of them um, will offer to be interviewed by the FBI, will come forward and cooperate. There was some concern last night um, that I think it was Deborah Ramirez, uh, her attorney was saying that uh, a week is not long enough, this isn't legitimate, she wouldn't cooperate. I think that was misunderstood by some of my colleagues. We spoke back and forth on it. My understanding this morning is um, she's offering to be questioned and may well be being questioned by the FBI today. Um, your friendship with Jeff Flake, which I, I, uh, sort of predates, obviously, everything that went down here, and actually is, is rooted in some common and shared experiences that relate to why we're at the Global Citizen Conference, yes. uh, Global Citizen Concert today. Um, you both you both did work abroad in Sub-Saharan Africa, right? That's right. Um, we're almost the same age. Uh, we're both 55. We're a few months apart. Um, and when we were in our 20s, uh, I spent a semester in Kenya as a college student. Uh, he spent time in Zimbabwe uh, as a Mormon missionary. Um, we've both lived and worked in South Africa. He lived and worked in Namibia. This was in the late 80s when the anti-apartheid movement was an absolutely critical part um, of the politics of the continent and the world. Um, and I was the chair of the Africa subcommittee my first four years, and he succeeded me. He's the chair now. We've traveled together to Africa. We've legislated together on Africa. Uh, and it's great to be a global citizen together. All right, Senator Chris Coons, thank you so much. Thank you. Now back to the show. 
All right, thank you, Chris. We are now hearing from the